Welcome to Love Unlimited Church. My name is Mark Rodriguez. I'm the pastor of the church, and today we have a great service prepared for you, your family, and your friends. But before we jump in, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you like this video, and that you comment as you're watching the message, because that helps people feel like they're not watching service by themselves. And don't forget to share this video. Now here is the message. Hey guys, I love new things. I mean, when I buy something, I can't wait until I get home to open the box. I mean, sometimes I'm driving home and I'm like with one hand driving and the other hand, I'm like sticking my hand in the bag and trying to find it so that I can kind of open it and look at it and touch it and smell it. I mean, sometimes even when I go to the grocery store and I love like sharp cheddar and I'll, I'll buy the slices and as I'm driving home, I'm like at a red light and I'm like, eh, and, and, I, and I grab a little piece and I eat it on my way home. And this one time, I remember I went to the Apple store and I bought an iPhone. Usually I would just order them and they would arrive, but but this time I, I wanted the full Apple experience. I go to the Apple store, I buy this new iPhone and I gotta set it up when I get home and I can't wait to get home to set it up. And so I'm in the car and I remember like with a nail, like trying to break the little plastic and, and finally I get it open and I, I start shaking the box as I'm driving home and, and then finally I'm able to grab the phone and I, I take the little plastic off at a, at a red light and I'm holding the phone and, and I'm, I'm touching the phone and I'm, I'm playing with the phone and I'm, I'm looking at the phone and uh, after a while I, I kind of lay the phone on, on my lap and I, I'm driving home and then I get a phone call and I'm talking on the phone, I'm listening to music, I'm jamming out in the car and when I finally get home, I open the door and I stand up and I forget that the iPhone was on my lap and it falls out of my truck and hits the ground and cracks. Guys, I hadn't even turned it on. I hadn't even set it up. And before I was able to do that because I was impatient, this new thing breaks. It shatters and I was so upset i was so mad at myself if i would have just waited it wouldn't have happened i mean we've all broken stuff we've all dropped something and and, and we've knocked something over maybe you're like oh I, I don't break things mark i'm not like you i'm sure when you were a kid you broke something and you're like oh my gosh i broke my mom's vase or my abuela's little figurine or, or whatever the case may be we've broken stuff we've crashed a car We've dirtied our shoes or ladies, you've broken a heel on your favorite pair of stilettos. Some of us have even gone further than breaking things. We've broken people. We've said things. We've said words that we haven't been able to take back. We've said things to loved ones and they have scarred us and it's pained us and it's, it's killed us, a, a piece of us has died. Hey, we've also been broken. People have done things to us. Life has done things to us that has broken us. And now we carry this weight and this pain and we've even taken on an identity of a broken person. And people know us as this broken person and people see us and they could see our hangups. They can see our addictions. They can see our pain because, because it leaks from us. It seeps from us. It becomes part of our, our character. We are this broken person. We are this person that life has been unfair to. We, we are this, this man or, or this woman that has been mistreated, that has been lied to. And so now we don't trust people because someone deceived us. We can't love another person because that woman cheated on us. That man lied to us. That man divorced us or broke us. Whatever the case may be, whatever your story may be, maybe some of these illustrations have, have touched you in a place that is sensitive, that is broken, and, and you're saying, yeah, that's who I am. And then when we act out, when we when we speak in ways that maybe uh, aren't nice, and and when we mistreat our children, when we mistreat our friends, when when we're late to work, we we all oh, that you don't understand. It's just the way that I am. I've always been this way. I'm broken, is what we're really saying. 
I'm hurt is what we're really saying and and we break and it's part of our identity and and we go even as far as this. this is a beauty mark this is a scar that life has given me and it hurts it brings depression it brings anger it brings resentment it brings regret we're like man i regret being this person i regret doing this thing we we look at our finances and we're like man if someone would have taught me how to do this better, then maybe I wouldn't ruin every opportunity that I get. Maybe if I would have been treated in a different way, maybe if I would have had different things in my life, my life would be different and I'm broken and we make excuses. Some of us draw power from our brokenness because someone hurt us, they hit us, they lied to us. They cheated on us and now we go back to that place and that's where we draw power and we hurt other people because hurt people hurt people. And we are these broken people just wandering through life, believing a lie that that is who we are and that is who I am gonna be because that's what someone told me that I was. You're a loser, you're broken, you're a mistake. You're something that we didn't plan for. I, I can never trust you. You're a liar. You're an addict. You're a cheater. And, and, and we take on these identities. We take on these personalities. We become these broken people. I, I would say these broken masterpieces that are just walking throughout life not living their full potential, not seeing life the way it's meant to be. Missing out on the purpose, the purpose that God has for you. You have been created for more. Can you say that with me? I have been created for more. I am not broken. This is not who God wants me to be. You're probably thinking, but, but Pastor Mark, that is who I am. That's who I always have been. I've been this way since I was a child. Let me tell you something, God has something new for you. And so you're probably thinking, can God get all these broken pieces that make me up and, and put me back together? Can he put back my broken heart? Can he put back my broken dreams? Can he put back my, my broken aspirations and my goals that have just fallen apart? My life has fallen apart. Can God put me back together again? How about if I told you that, that God doesn't want to? God doesn't want to put you back together again. And maybe for some of you, you're saying, oh, I, I knew it. I knew it. It's impossible. God can't put me back together again. It's not that he can't. It's that he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to put your broken pieces back together again. He wants to make you new. He wants to get your broken heart and he wants to give you a new heart. He wants to get your broken dreams and give you a better dream. The Bible says things that you have never imagined is what God has for you. So what does that have to say that this brain, these dreams, these ideals that we have that are broken is not what God, the purpose that God has for us. And I can back that up. Isaiah 43 says this. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and the reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Stop there. Give me your attention. You're like, what the heck does that have to do with anything that's going on in my life right now? Chariots? Uh, re, that he reinforced them and, and they lay there and never to rise again. God is talking about when he set his children free who were slaves in Egypt. Slaves like many of us live lives in servitude to these broken identities and dreams. And God is reminding his children, this is what I say, the same God that set you free. The same God that took you out of Egypt, the same God that parted the Red Sea, and when Pharaoh was coming to get you and he thought that he had you, 
the waters collapsed and those chariots and Egyptians drowned in that sea. The God of miracles. He is reminding his children here in Isaiah 43, I am the God of miracles, the God that set you free. And then in verse 18, he says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Guys, how many of us, we live our life saying, oh, remember when? Remember when we were this person. Remember when the days were better. God is saying, forget the former things. Yes, I've done good things in the past. Yes, you've had better days, but I want you to forget that. Don't dwell on the past. And the reason that God doesn't want you to dwell on the past, it's because when you dwell on the past, the automatic thing that happens in your life is that you become depressed. You are saddened because you're not there anymore. Don't dwell on the past. And then verse 19, I love this part. He says, see, I am doing a new thing. And now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Guys, what God is saying here is that he's doing the impossible. What people told you was impossible, that you had no hope, that there is no way that you can love again, that there is no way that you can dream again, that there is no way that you will ever be successful. God is saying, I am doing a new thing. Don't you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness. Let me tell you something. When you think of the wilderness, there is no way. That's where people go to get lost. In the wild, there is no streets. There is no path. And God says, in the middle of the wilderness that you find yourself today, I am creating a way. Hey, maybe you are in a wilderness today. Maybe you are lost. God wants to make a way for you. But you have to allow him to make a way. And the second thing, streams in the wasteland. Another translation says streams in the desert. My friends, there's no streams in the desert. That's why it's called the desert. It is dry. It is hot. It is desolate. But in the middle of that desolate place, in the middle of your desolate place, in the middle of your desert, the God of miracles will make a way. The God of miracle will make water spring forth. What is that metaphor of water springing forth? Water represents life. So in the middle of death, in the middle of brokenness, God shows up, does a new thing, and life begins to flow. Those parts of your heart that have stopped loving will love again because God is giving you a new heart. God wants to give you a new life. You may be living in regret. You may be living in depression. Allow God to do a new thing in your life. Forget the past. Forget the pain. Forget the words that people spoke upon you and receive that God wants to do a new thing. You need to know today that you are not a mistake. Oh, but my parents told me I was a mistake. You are not a mistake. And you know why? Because God does not create mistakes. And so because of that fact, you must know that you are not a mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. God is true. He is faithful and he does not create mistakes. And God is doing a new thing in your life today. Hey, I know that life is is hard. I know that we're living in the craziest times in our lifetime, but in the midst of chaos, in the midst of madness, in the midst of the desert, God wants to do a new thing in your life. Not tomorrow, not in a month, not next year. Do you not perceive it? And so if you're you're watching this today, I want to pray for you. I want to help you achieve those things that you have been created to achieve. Those things that God has purposed in your life. And all you need to do is allow him to work in your life. Maybe you are a Christian and you're watching this and you are not in a good place right now. Hey, maybe it's time that you rededicate your life to God. 
that you say, God, I am sorry. I am sorry that I've lost my faith. I'm sorry that I've taken my eyes off of you and I've put my eyes on my problem. I've put my eyes on my situation. God says, forget the former things. I'm doing a new thing in your life. Hey, maybe you look at yourself, hey, I'm not a religious person. Hey, I, I neither am I, but I have a relationship with Jesus. And because of that, I have hope. Even in my darkest day, I have hope because Jesus is a part of my life. And I wanna invite you to ask Jesus to be a part of your life. It's real simple. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer and I'm gonna ask you to repeat these words with me and mean them from the bottom of your heart and you can begin your relationship with Jesus today. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Repeat after me and say, Dear God, I come to you today and I say I'm sorry. For the mistakes that I've made, for the sins that I've committed, I give you my life. I give you everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, have you prayed that prayer today? I want to be the first person to say congratulations. This is the best decision of your life and I want to help you draw closer to Jesus. And all you need to do is text the word CONNECT to 786-541-1020. Text the word CONNECT to 786-541-1020. And I'm gonna send you some resources that are gonna help you draw closer to God. And hey, maybe you're watching this video today and you're like, man, I, I love this, uh, or I'm part of Love Unlimited and I, I wanna support the ministry of Love Unlimited. It's real easy. We're doing some amazing things in Miami and around the world and we can't do it without your financial support. And it's real easy. All you need to do is go to loveunlimited.com forward slash give and you can make your donation right there or you can use Cash App and use the dollar sign and the word Love Unlimited and you can make your donation of any size there, just like it's here on the screen. Go to loveunlimited.com forward slash give or use Cash App. Thank you so much. And now I wanna invite you to worship with the Love Unlimited Band.